Hey, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine, and today I want to address a common problem that we might run into, and that is sharp frets. Now, for those of you that were paying attention, I had a look, uh, I want to say a couple years ago, within a year or two ago, at a glary bass, and one of the things I've noticed is that it kind of looked like the fret wires had just been snipped clean, but they left them kind of sharp, which doesn't come as much of a surprise. And so if you look back, I have videos where I worked that fretboard and smoothed the frets, but I kind of did so making do with what I could get my hands on. And so as I'm thinking about it, I was playing some of my other basses and I hadn't noticed sharp frets before, but I am starting to notice a little bit of it now. And so I'm thinking I've got an issue with fret sprout. So what fret sprout is, is that when you have changes in humidity, the wood shrinks, but of course the fret wires are more dimensionally stable. They don't shrink, so they end up sticking out a little bit. When I look back at my instruments, I have a guitar that's been with me for almost 50 years that came originally from Mexico. I've got instruments from Venezuela. I've got instruments from Puerto Rico. I've got instruments that I picked up in the Pacific Northwest and now that we are in the southwest, it's a lot drier climate, and with the changes in humidity, I can expect some of those necks to shrink slightly, leaving some sharp edges exposed. So, because I was noticing this, I contacted our friends at Music Nomad Equipment Care and talked to them a little bit about what was going on and they've got me set up with the perfect things so I can rectify the situation and enjoy playing my instruments. Now there are four main steps that I'm looking to do. Number one, we want to file the fret ends, the part that's sticking out away from the neck. Secondly, we want to round the fret ends so even though they're not sticking out, they don't have any acute edges. After that, we're going to want to polish them up, make them nice and smooth. And then lastly, since I'll have the strings off of the instrument, it's a perfect time to condition the fretboard. And so we'll be using some great stuff from Music Nomad Equipment Care. So I'm going to give you the lowdown and kind of talk you through the steps. Let's have a look. So here are the tools I'm going to use to get this job done. From Music Nomad Equipment Care, I've got my premium work mat. It's 36 inches long by 17 wide. It's perfect for any of the string instruments I'm going to work on. It gives them a nice protected surface and kind of non-slip, which is also very important. Next, I've got my cradle cube neck support, and that also is perfect because depending on how you position it, you can use it for basses, guitars, smaller instruments. It's very versatile. I have my F1 oil to apply to the fretboard, get that nice and shape. I've got the Freen kit, which will help me get my frets nice and smooth and polished. I have the B file, which is the one that you use for fret beveling. I also have the fret end dressing file, or the E file, that'll help me smooth off those beveled edges and make them feel more comfortable in my hand. Now, I may need, and I don't know if I will, if I'm careful I probably won't, but I might need some Zymol GBC flat, it's a matte finish polish, and it might I might need it for the neck. I'm not sure, but I have it on hand just in case. And lastly, I'm going to do this work with hobby magnifier loops. And the beauty of those is you can magnify your field and still have your hands free to work. And those are available pretty much at any hobby shop that you go to or online. Okay, I'm going to talk you through the process because the whole thing took me about an hour and a half kind of from start to finish. And instead of making a really long video where you watch me do all of that, I'll kind of give you the bullet points. Of course, the first thing you want to do is set up your work area. And again, I've got my Music Nomad mat and the Cradle Cube, so I'm all dialed in there. Next step, I'm taking off the strings. And in this case, I didn't take them off entirely because I like this set of strings. They're still good. So I'm just removing them from the head and kind of getting them out of the way to give me clear access to the neck. 
The next step, you can put the file on the B file. Again, you could do it pretty straight angle or the 45 degree. And so in this particular instance, I went with the 45 degree. I don't think the other one is exactly straight. It's more kind of like a, I don't know, maybe a 15 degree angle. But I set this up and I'm running it along the side of the neck itself. And it's a very tactile kind of thing. You feel when the frets stick out, you kind of feel them bind with the file. So just gingerly working that along there and then kind of constantly feeling with my fingers to see where do I feel a sharp area and kind of working it there. And I am being very careful so that I'm not really scraping the side of the fretboard. It is a little unavoidable in some areas, but I'm still, you know, kind of just going slowly and working my way kind of fret by fret, making sure that I'm feeling that I've gotten it pretty much with the first stage with this B file. Then the next step, I'm using the fret end dressing file. And the, so the beauty of this is you have two surfaces that can file and the other two surfaces are smooth. And the benefit of that is that you let the smooth surface ride along the fretboard so you're not gouging the wood. And that's kind of one of the differences with just any old file that you're kind of safe with the smooth side and you're doing the shaping with the rough side, if you will. And so basically what I did is after I worked with my B file, I worked with this E file to get any sharp little corners. And this is where my magnifying loops came in handy. So I'm looking at this and as I feel, if I feel I'm just very carefully working back those little corners or if there's a sharp edge, just kind of working that back. Next, time for the freen. You put on a template that fits your particular frets and so I've got one here. And then I went working the whole collection of frets, just a little dab of the, the freen paste and working that with the cloth that comes enclosed and worked methodically. I went from my higher register down, but it especially is nice because those metal templates keep you from getting a bunch of stuff on your fretboard. And by the same token, they flex a little. So those areas that you've rounded off and smoothed, you're also polishing because the that little flexible steel template gives just enough to give you a nice little kind of around the corner kind of approach. Once I had those cleaned up, I did another cleanup. I used a shop towel just to kind of get excess paste off. And I'm using my F1 oil and I'm putting a drop on the kind of in the middle of the frets and working it in and this is where i'm going to be getting a little bit of it's going to help with those slight scuffs that i have on the edge of the fretboard i'm working that oil into those areas and basically i just kind of went working down the fretboard kind of at first you don't want to get too too much a, a drop will do you and i did like the first five and then because the towel I was using already had some oil on it. I went a few more frets until it didn't seem, until it seemed like I needed a little bit more. So basically did a nice working the fret oil into the whole fretboard and then wiped it down to get all the excess off. But it did soak in a fair amount. And especially on these fret marker blocks, it gives them a really nice sheen and everything really came together really nicely. So on my next step, I flipped the instrument over and again the cradle cube is great because you've got a flat surface that you can put the fretboard on. So I flipped it over and worked some of my GBC Sharp Natural Finish paste. And this stuff has a lovely, I want to say almost banana or coconutty kind of smell. Maybe more coconut than banana. But I worked this on the, the neck, on the back of the neck where my fingers are going to run. But I also worked along those edges that I had maybe scuffed a little as well. So I get the combination of the oil and the polish to help kind of smooth this whole area so it feels nice and comfortable again. And then while I was at it, 
I, I figured, well, this base has a natural finish. It's not a glossy finish. So I've used the GBC Sharp on the body and on the back and on the headstock and just kind of worked all the way around to get it nice and clean. And then time to put the strings back in their place, tuned them up. Everything's feeling great and I am good to go. Okay, that completes this project. You can see with the right tools and a little time, you can take that instrument that you already have and you already love, but it's giving you a little bit of problems. You can just make it that much better. So I got pretty much everything I needed from Music Nomad Equipment Care, and I encourage you to go onto their website, musicnomadcare.com, where you can see the vast array of all of the things they have for you to take good care of your instruments and gear in general. I did get a little help from Zymol with the wax that I used, the natural wax on the body and the neck, but that's only because I had, that's what I had. And you can find equivalent guitar waxes or guitar polishes at Music Nomad Equipment Care as well. So if you want to check out the Zymol line, go to zymol.com, that is Z-Y-M-O-L.com. And of course, the files, the mat, the cradle cube, Pretty much everything I needed for this job was Music Nomad Care. So, this has been Raul from Bass Musician Magazine, making my sharp frets nice and smooth and delicious to play again. Mm -hmm.